Question 9 from the 2018 Higher Physics Examination, Section 2. A ray of monochromatic light is incident on a glass prism as shown. Show that the refractive index of the glass for this ray of light is 1.89. Well, almost immediately we go to Schnell's Law. And Schnell's Law says that the sine of the angle in the air, sine theta in the air, divided by sine theta in the glass, sine theta in the glass, should give you a value for the refractive index. That's Schnell's Law. So we've got to identify the uh, angle of incidence in the air, and it's always between the normal and the ray, so it's 45 degrees, so sine of 45 degrees, divided by sine of the angle in the glass, uh, between the normal and the ray, and that's the angle in there. So it's sine 22 degrees, and that will give us a refractive index. Do that in your calculator, and we end up with the refractive index, N, is equal to 1.89. Remember, no units for the refractive index. It's got no units at all. So that's the first one. Now, part B says, state what is meant by the term critical angle. Now, when you see a state question, just give a sentence, note off by heart, and the answer to that one would be the following. The critical angle is the angle of incidence that will give an angle of refraction equal to 90 degrees. And that's what we mean by the critical angle. You can see the critical angle here in this particular uh, quick diagram here. You can see the angle comes in. We'll call that the critical angle. That would be theta c between the ray of light and the normal the ray of light travelling that way, and you can see that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So theta c would be the critical angle. The critical angle is the angle of incidence that will give an angle of refraction equal to 90 degrees. Question 9b, part 2. Calculate the critical angle for this light in the prism. Well, we know from our data book that the critical angle can be found from the following. Sine theta critical is going to be equal to 1 divided by the refractive index of the material. So we know that sine theta critical then is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1.89, which is the refractive index of the material. So sine of theta critical, if you do that in your calculator, you'll get an answer of 0 0.529. Make sure your calculator is on degrees. Take the inverse of that, and you get sine, you get the theta critical, will come out to be 32 degrees to the nearest degree. Question 9, part 3. Complete the diagram below to show the path of the ray as it passes through the prism and emerges into the air. Mark on the diagram the values of all the relevant angles. So it's a four mark question, four mark, uh, four mark a question. So take your time and just work your way through the angles. We'll start off by extending the initial ray, which is entered into the block. We'll do that, and the ray strikes the surface inside the glass about there. Now I need to draw a different line to represent the normal and the normal is usually represented at right angles so if I can just draw that from here and that will be the normal for right angles. So we can see that we've got to find this angle in here which is the angle inside the glass before we can find out where the emergent ray is going to come from. And to do that we have to really chase the angles. But can you see a triangle with one missing side? We start from here to here to here to here. So there's a triangle. And that triangle we can find this missing angle in here because if we add up all the angles and subtract from 180, then we should get this angle in here to be 52 degrees. And you can check yourself. It's 52 degrees by adding up all the angles. 52 and 68 is going to give us uh, 60 and 60, 120. 120 plus the top angle of 60 is going to give us 180. Now, we've got a position to find this angle in here. And we can do that because between the surface of the prism the edge of the prism and the normal is 90 degrees. So these two angles here must add up to give you 90 degrees. 
So it follows that that angle there must be 90 degrees, take away 52, which must give an angle of 38 degrees. So that angle in there is 38 degrees. I'll just leave it at the degree sign for the moment. So we've now got that angle in there. Now, all we have to do now is find out what the emergent angle is. But before we go, we remember that the critical angle for that glass block was equal to 32 degrees. Now this angle in here is 38 degrees, which means it's bigger than the critical angle, which means the emergent ray is not going to leave the prism, but it's going to be reflected downwards at an angle of 38 degrees to the normal. So we'll draw in the reflected angle. Why is that? Because the angle of the inside the angle inside the glass is 38 degrees. It's bigger than the critical angle. Therefore, you're going to get internal reflection. It's going to reflect down towards here. So we have to draw another normal. And we'll do that here. Draw another normal here. And we have to chase the angles again. Well, if that angle is 38, then if it's reflected, then this angle here must be 38 degrees. So we've got that angle there to be 38 degrees. And we know between the edge and the normal is 90 degrees. So 38 from uh, 90 is going to leave you with an angle of an angle of 52 degrees. So they add up to give you 90 degrees. So we're going to get 52 and 38 adds up to give you the 90 degree between the normal and the edge here. So now we've got to find this angle. And we know uh, that all the angles in this triangle here must add up to give you 180. So we've got 52 and 60 already. Add them together and subtract from 180. And we're left with 68 degrees here. Now already you, you should be able to see a kind of pattern emerging here. Uh, can you see 60, 68, 52, 52, 60, and 60 here they add up to give you that 180 degrees. So we want to find this angle here, the angle in the glass, so we can find the emergent angle into the air. So that normal and the edge of the prism is 90 degrees, so between here and here is 90 degrees. If that's 68 degrees, then the angle inside here must be 22 degrees. So that's the angle between the normal inside the prism. And all we've got to do is find the angle which it emerges at. Now, 22 degrees is less than a critical angle, so you will get the ray of light emerging from the prism. So we put down Schnell's law. We put down sine theta in the air divided by sine theta in the glass should equal the refractive index. Now we're after sine theta in the air. That's what we're after. We divide that by sine theta in the glass, which is going to be sine 22 degrees, and that should give us a value of 1.89, the refractive index of the glass. So if I just cross multiply, sine theta A, the angle in the air, is equal to 1.89 multiplied by sine 22 degrees. And if we work that out, we're going to get an answer of 0 0.708. So sine theta in the air is equal to 0 0.708. Take the inverse of sine, make sure your calculus on degrees, and theta in the air, if you do the sine inverse for that, will be 45 degrees. So this ray of light is going to leave at an angle of 45 degrees. And that will be 45 degrees in there like that. So you can see what's happening in this, this diagram. You can see the instant ray comes in, is refracted, is internally reflected, and is refracted back out like that. It's almost going in the opposite direction. And we use these prisms and binoculars and all that to reverse the rays. But that's an aside point. So the lesson for this question is difficult. It's four marks. You have to be confident with your angles. You have to be confident with that prism. You have to practice working out your angles. And you have to know Schnell's law. But the most important fact you've got to know is that when the angle inside the prism is glass is bigger than the critical angle, the ray of light will not emerge. It will be 
internally reflected and you can draw your line down like that and then chase the angles again to get your answer. Question 9, final part C. A ray of white light is shown through the prism and a spectrum is observed as shown. White light passing from air into the glass prism and you get the spectrum projected onto a screen. The prism is now replaced with a, another prism made from a different type of glass with a low refractive index. Describe one difference in the spectrum produced by this prism compared to the spectrum produced by the first prism. Now, in order to answer this question, it's a little bit wise to go over to that wonderful site, the PHET Physics Simulation site. And on this site, you actually can play with the prism and white light and get all these answers yourself. It's a very good revision tip. And here's how you get the answer for this if you haven't got the practical set up in the lab. Now, here we have the situation. We have got the ray of white light going through the prism. And you can see that it begins to split up inside the prism. And then the rays of the different colours all pass down here onto a screen. Now, what I'm going to do is actually reduce the refractive index and see what happens. So if I reduce the refractive index, ah, you can see that the spectrum is becoming a little bit narrower. And it's also moving up the screen. So it's not refracted as much as with a bigger refractive index. So if I increase the refractive index of the material, you can see that the spectrum is much wider, but it's also further down the screen. You can imagine your screen sitting here. If I reduce the refractive index, you can see the emergent rays are not going to be bent as much and they will appear further up the screen. And the other thing is that the spectrum width itself is slightly smaller. A wonderful sight is PHET.